How should I begin? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus, forgive me for stealing and behaving like a sinful thief. I'm ashamed of myself, and I won't do it again. From now on, I'll be honest and honourable. Amen. My, this one has seen better days. I ought to tell someone about it. But now, Almighty God, please grant us peace that we may rebuild this little shrine. And maybe scallops too. Amen. Lord Jesus, I often drank and indulged more than I should have. Please help me overcome my intemperance. Amen. So, I made it this far. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Mm. I don't know the rest in Latin. But she'll understand my native tongue too, won't she? Holy Mary, Queen of Heaven, merciful Mother, just Virgin, loving, yes, loving and, uh, and forgiving. Please look down on me and hear me, a great sinner. I want to say sorry and repent, to do penance for, for being such a villain and for all the terrible things I did. I have sinned terribly. I killed a man, Runt. He was a criminal and a murderer and he, he deserved it, but I shouldn't have killed him, even though he deserved it. It's not for me to judge and punish others. It was a sin, committed in anger, and it burdens my soul. Please forgive me, and let me make amends. And I did all sorts of wicked deeds. I lied and, and stole and behaved like a villain and a thug. I'm truly sorry for my deeds. I promise I won't do them again. And I'll make a donation to the church to make amends for everything. And I killed other people too. Oh, merciful Mother of God. Sometimes righteously, sometimes I had to, but sometimes I was simply overcome by anger and... Oh, please forgive me. And I have fornicated. I'm ashamed of it. 
But I'll be more virtuous from now on, I promise. Well, as I said, I have sinned. But at heart, I'm not a bad person. I know I failed in some of the trials you sent me, but please, give me a chance to make amends. I beg your forgiveness, Almighty God. Please forgive a humble sinner, as Jesus Christ forgave those who nailed him to the cross. Grant mercy to everyone here. Look down on the people of Scalitz, and let this province know peace and quiet again. People don't deserve the horrors that are happening. Let there be an end to it all. Amen. God be with you. I want to make a donation to the church as a token of repentance for the things I did wrong. Here you are. And I gladly accept your offering, my son. I'll pray for your forgiveness. But I'm curious, how come you got so devout all of a sudden? Has something happened? Johanka sent me to do penance to the Virgin Mary and make a donation to her church. Johanka? Yes, Father. It's, uh, it's a long story. Not to worry, lad. I had to listen to a lot of long stories at the university in Prague. Each of the masters tried to speak longer than the others so as not to appear less learned. I can handle it, believe me. And what do you think? You're a learned man? It's hard to say. Maybe I should go to Sasso and see for myself. Thank you for telling me, lad. One thing is certain, though. There are interesting times ahead. That you can be sure of. More interesting than now? Don't know if I'll be able to handle that. Anyway, I should get back to your hunker. I shouldn't keep her waiting. God be with you, Father. Wait a moment. You came here the whole way from Sasso on foot? I did. I made a pilgrimage of penance. I stopped to pray at every shrine and cross along the way. By the way, that shrine before Talmberg, by the path from Sassau, I don't know what happened to it, but someone should see to getting it fixed. You noticed, eh? Yes, I know about that. It's just that there hasn't been the means to get it fixed, see? It just occurred to me, this affair with Johanka reminds me of a manuscript I made a copy of once. You might find it interesting. If you want, you can come with me and I'll find it for you. Or stop by the Presbytery later. All right, Father. Thanks. God be with you. Where could I have put it? I knew it was a mistake to put it in a safe place. Ah, here it is. About that manuscript, Father. Ah, excellent. Look, I found it. Copied excerpts from the work of Magister Parisiensis. The who? Matthew of Yanov, the master of Paris as he was known. He studied there. He was a university master. He traveled a lot and was very learned. Hmm. Did I tell you about Jan Hus? Um, no. Oh. I must be confusing you with someone else. Anyway, this Matthew, he was one of those who said similar things to what Hus is saying now. I'll tell you about it sometime. Ah, I see. Hus, Matthew, yes. And what use will that be to me? I can't say, but it came to mind when you were talking about Johanka because Matthew wrote about similar things, about women who had visions and the like. I've got a copy here. I'll lend it to you if you promise to bring it back. You do know how to read, don't you? Of course I do. By Christ, lad, you're a regular scholar. Here you are then. I'm sure it's in good hands. You can bring it back to me when you're passing again. Ah, all right, thanks. You're welcome, lad. Now run along and don't keep your honka waiting.
There's nothing to see here. On your way. What happened to Yohanka? Nothing good, I'm sorry to say. She was locked up by the Papal Inquisitor Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshoff. It seems he somehow caught wind of this preaching of hers. He's accused her of spreading heresy and had her placed under arrest. Well, we must do something. Hmm. Well, you can try talking to Bishop Yaroslav. He can tell you more. As a servant of the royal headman, your name ought to carry some weight with him. But watch your step. This matter is entirely in the hands of church law, so you mustn't overestimate your lay authority here. Jesus Christ! What's going to happen to her? I don't know, Henry. It all depends on the Inquisitor and how he decides. The accusations brought against Johanka are very serious. Right. I'll go and see this Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshoff. May God go with you. And thank you, Henry. I'm glad you're standing up for your hanker. If you need anything, do come and see me. So, I am... Henry of Scarlet, from the garrison of the Royal Hetman, Sir Radzig Kobila. I've heard a lot about you, my son. I'm pleased to meet you. Bishop Yaroslav, uh, sir, my lord, to what do I owe your interest in my humble self? I was told you survived the massacre in Scarlet and warned the Townburg garrison. You tracked down the raiders of a stud farm in Neuhof, wasn't it? To their hideout in the woods. And then you led Sir Radzig and his armed company there and joined bravely in the skirmish, and even killed their notorious leader by your own hand. And I believe you have many other deeds to your name. That's quite remarkable, considering your age, is it not? Well, you're too kind, Monsignor. I'm just trying to do what's right, and what's needed. Quite rightly, too, my son. I expect we'll be hearing more about you, but I assume you didn't come here to exchange pleasantries. Or am I mistaken? No, Monsignor, you're quite right. I'm here about your hanker. Naturally. I'd be quite surprised if it were otherwise. So, tell me what's on your mind. How did you find out about your hanker? Word came to me of what was happening here. That some young girl was claiming to speak for the Blessed Virgin. I traveled here immediately, as my duty demanded, and observed events in Sassau incognito, in order to examine the matter at first hand. I see. Why did you have her imprisoned? Because she broke the promise she made to me, and persisted in actions that bear the signs of heresy. And what will happen to Yohanka now? I must weigh the gravity of her transgressions and investigate these alleged visions of hers. I consider it very improbable that she is indeed being visited by the Blessed Virgin. Nevertheless, I cannot at this time rule it out entirely. So you think it could be true? In that case, Johanka hasn't done anything wrong. It's not that straightforward. Even if her visions were real, she was at fault for interpreting them as she saw fit and preaching to the people. So you decide just like that? But you don't even know Johanka? I certainly do not decide just like that. I'm thoroughly examining the entire matter, and you would be well advised not to question my authority. I will call Johanka and the witnesses, question them, and then pronounce a verdict. And will there be anyone there to defend Johanka? Do you doubt my judgment? I would never be so bold, sir. 
Surely it would be only just that someone should speak for you, Hanka, about all her good deeds and so forth? Naturally, I will also question those who would speak in her defense. Since you are interceding, I expect you have someone in mind? Yes. Actually, me. As I surmised. But this matter does not directly concern you. Why should I allow you to appear before the court? Johanka is my neighbor, and I have a Christian duty to come to her aid. I can't just stand by and do nothing. I have to concur with you on that. Your concern seems sincere, so I will grant your request. Very well. You will defend Johanka. You may speak in her defense if you so wish, and you may also bring witnesses. I will question any such witnesses, and naturally I shall question Johanka too. Thank you, Monsignor. In that case, I'll need to speak to Johanka first. That won't be possible. It's forbidden by the Inquisition procedure. Until the entire matter is resolved, Johanka can speak only to me and no one else. But I have to talk to her. How can I defend her otherwise? No. You are strictly forbidden to speak with her. I have already conceded to something that is quite beyond normal practice. Bear that in mind. I would like to expedite the matter. The trial will take place in Sassau Church in three days' time at the latest. Come and let me know when you're ready to proceed. In the meantime, I will continue my investigation. Very well, Monsignor. I had better get on with it then, sir. Farewell. Before you go, you know Johanka longer than anyone else. You spent a lot of time with her, as I've discovered. Tell me, my son, truthfully, what do you think of this whole affair? About the Virgin Mary? I... I believe the Virgin does visit her. Johanka is honest. She wouldn't lie about such a thing. And the things she says sound truthful and compelling. It really does seem like a heavenly revelation. Who else could it be from? But the Virgin Mary. The origin of these so-called visions of hers must be investigated. But thank you for your candor. Is there anything else you can tell me? Johanka is an honest girl, and virtuous. She's a good Christian, who attends church and thinks of others. Good. Please continue. Johanka helped a lot of people. She worked her fingers to the bone helping Brother Nicodemus with the sick and injured. That is certainly commendable. What else can you tell me about her? That's about all I can tell you. You speak of her as if she should be beatified. I find it hard to believe she's as saintly as all that. I have a feeling you're hiding something from me. She's worried about Matthias. He's from Skalitz too, and she's very fond of him. But he was wounded in a raid on Merhoyed recently, and since then he's been lying in a fever. Johanka believes that if she does what the Blessed Virgin wants of her, Matthias might be healed. Hmm. Interesting. Anything else? That's about all I can tell you. You speak of her as if she should be beatified. I find it hard to believe she's as saintly as all that. I have a feeling you're hiding something from me. Well, before, in Scalitz, Johanka was sort of, well, just a simple village girl. I never imagined I'd hear her talk in the way she does now. She's completely transformed. A simple village girl. I see. Do continue. That's about all I can tell you. Is that really everything? I have nothing more to add, Monsignor. Very well. Thank you, my son. One more thing before you go. 
Let me remind you that it's your Christian duty to report anything suspicious going on concerning the church and the true faith. If you're aware of anything of the sort in these parts, if you prove yourself a commendable servant of the church, I would also take that into account in judging Johanka's case. All right, Monsignor. I'll bear that in mind. I'll be with you. Adela, the Inquisitor is going to try Johanka in court. Oh, Lord. I hope she's acquitted. I was absolutely devastated when they took her away. I need people to speak in her defense, and I'd like to ask you to do it. I don't want to go there, really. I'm afraid of that Inquisitor, but... You helped me, and so did Johanka. It's only right that I should try and help her. But what am I supposed to say there? I'm just a simple village girl. I don't know anything about these things. That doesn't matter. You just be yourself. It should be enough to talk about all the good Johanker does here, and how she helps others. I'll send for you if you're needed. All right. Thanks a lot. <coughs> Brother Nicodemus. You've heard something? The Inquisitor has decided that Yohanka will be tried, but he's agreed that I can defend her. That's really quite unusual. It must mean he hasn't come to a clear conclusion yet. Yes. I'll get her out of it. I'm afraid it may not be that easy. The thing is, I expect Yohanka will say the same things before the court that she's been preaching. What are you saying? Well, I've been thinking about what she's been saying, and it seems to me her preaching has a certain progression. Are you acquainted with the notion of the three orders of man? Not really, no. It's like this. It's said that everyone has their God-given place and purpose on Earth. Laboratores, Oratores, and Bellatores. Those who work, those who pray, and those who fight. The common folk are born to work to reap the fruits of the earth and to obey the laws of God and man. It is the purpose of the nobles to protect the people and the church against all dangers and to maintain peace and justice on earth. And the church in turn has the task of caring for the spiritual welfare of all, ensuring the salvation of their souls and bringing solace to the people in times of hardship so that they can endure their earthly trials and enter the kingdom of heaven. But what's all that got to do with Yohanka? Well, I noticed in her first sermon she primarily addressed the concerns of the common folk, and in the second, she criticised the nobility. I suppose so, but I still don't get it. In short, I'm afraid that now she might start talking about the church if she gets the chance, and if she's as critical as she was about the lords, I dread to think how that might end up. Henry, you must warn her against that. She must show humility before the Inquisitor, and the wisest course would be to admit to being wrong. She's rather stubborn, but perhaps she'll listen to you. But the Inquisitor said no one's allowed to see her. No one except the Inquisitor's own men. You'll just have to think something up. I'm afraid your hanker's fate is mainly in your hands now. I'm relying on you. Take care now. Witnesses can be summoned for your hanker's trial. So, I wanted to ask you if you'd give a testimony. Maybe some learned speech in her defense? I'd be glad to do it. Your hanker deserves my help. Such testimonies could carry a lot of weight. You should try and get as many as you can. Farewell. I need something from you, sir. I suppose you heard that Johanka was locked up by the Inquisitor and is facing charges of heresy. I did, and it's most disturbing news. What you might not know is that he's agreed that I can defend her at the trial. You? Do you even know what to say? 
Well, I'm preparing for it. I'll think up something, don't worry. But I need you to testify at the court. In Johanka's defense, of course. Naturally. You don't think I could just sit here and do nothing? Besides, the bishop has already insisted that I appear before the court. Oh. All right. One moment. I apologize if I was a little hasty. This whole affair has left me anxious. I appreciate that you want to defend her. However, I don't think it would have any effect. No offense, but I don't think you'll be able to achieve anything in court. I'm afraid the Inquisitor will judge as he sees fit, whatever anyone says. But I have an idea how you could help. Oh? How's that? Flee. With you, Hanka, of course. Huh. You might be right. But how? The bishop won't let anyone see Johanka. Johanka is being held at the rat house, isn't she? You could pass yourself off as one of the Inquisitor's men, get in there at night, and escape with her. How am I supposed to pass myself off as one of his men? Well, when his guard came here, he identified himself by means of a document. If you could get your hands on it, think about it. But whatever you decide, if Johanka comes to any harm, You'll have me to answer to. I'm very fond of her, and her of me, and I don't want anything to happen to her, understand? But if everything ends well, I'll show you my gratitude, I assure you. Bye.